Hello, Gary aspirants. Uh, in this video, we'll try to understand the overt and covert dimensions of one of the most critical areas of CAT, and that is the quantitative section. Let's look at uh, the, the overall uh, scope of the quantitative section, the syllabus, which we're talk about, talking about, and that is arithmetic, algebra, geometry, and modern math. These are the four modules uh, which have been uh, there in the test over the years and topics have been outsourced from these four modules. Let's, let's look at the, uh, the, as I said, the overt and the core dimensions of each of these modules and then try to understand the larger picture. Let's start with arithmetic. Arithmetic uh, has uh, an inclusion of topics like uh, uh, number system, ratio and proportion, percentage, profit and loss, mixtures, averages. Now, these are topics which probably remind you of your formative years of education. You go back to class uh, 10th, probably before that, uh, we have been uh, studying this kind of math uh, since our uh, early days of schooling. Uh, but there is a difference. Now, if you look at uh, the CAD, uh, the challenge is more insightful. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's in greater depth. It's not just a test of math. It's a test of uh, a certain uh, managerial skill through a certain uh, topic in math. So let's try to look at uh, one such question from this module. Uh, the question, what is the remainder when 2 to the power 32 is divided by 7? Now, apparently this, uh, apparently or overtly, this is a question on remainder theorem. Uh, we can easily see that 2 to the power 32 is a large number. The index 32 makes this number a big one. And you have to check for uh, divisibility by 7 and try to understand that if there is a remainder, then what will it be? So uh, we start working on uh, the question in a certain way. We try to see what happens when subsequent powers of 2 are divided by 7. Suppose the question had been 2 to the power 1 divided by 7. The remainder would have been 2. Why? Because the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Had it been 2 squared by 7, the remainder would have been 4. Had it been 2 cube by 7, the remainder would have been 1. Now, the minute you reach this level, the next power of 2, 2 to the power 4 by 7, 16 by 7 and remainder is 2 again. 2 to the power 5 by 7, 32 by 7, remainder is 4. 2 to the power 6 by 7 and the remainder is 1. When you reach the next power of 2, 2 to the power 7 by 7, the remainder is again 2. So what is happening here? there is a, a pattern which emerges and the pattern is 2, 4, 1. This pattern repeats in sets of 3 in triplets, which therefore means that if you have to find a remainder when 2 to the power 32 is divided by 7, you simply have to divide the index 32 by 3 since a repetition happen in, happens in sets of 3. And if you divide 30 2 by 3, the remainder is 2. Remainder 2 would mean that you are at the second level, which is 4, because the, the series is 2, 4, 1. So when you divide 32 by 3, the remainder is 2, which means that the actual remainder when 2 to the power 32 is divided by 7 should be 4. The answer is 4. Now, apparently, overtly, as we said a while back, this may come across as a test of arithmetic, a test of remainders. Covertly, more insightfully, uh, at a latent level, you will discover that this is a, a test of a basic skill which managers need to possess, and that is symmetry. Your ability to understand patterns and formations. 
uh, and if you're able to do so, you will be able to understand human behavior. You'll be able to understand markets because markets also follow a trend. So this ability to understand uh, trends, uh, symmetry, uh, formations is what uh, this particular module is all about. Let's look at uh, the next module, algebra. Algebra has uh, a huge representation of equations. Equations could be linear, could be simultaneous, could be quadratic. And then, of course, we have time, speed, distance, and time and work. Now, these are the, the popular areas in algebra, which have been there in the CAT. Again, at uh, an overt level, at a superficial level, you might feel that this is a test of equations only. But at the covert level, there is another, another challenge which we need to understand. We've taken a question here to understand this challenge. Deepa entered a florist shop and bought X flowers for Y rupees. X and Y are integers. If she had bought 10 more flowers, she would have got all four rupees too and saved 80 paisa a dozen. Find X and Y. Now, the starting point for this question is uh, there are these uh, two variables. On one side, we have X flowers. On the other side, we have the Y rupees. So X flowers are bought for Y rupees. And then the question goes on to say that X plus 10 flowers are bought for 2 rupees. And further, it's given that X and Y are integers. So if you look at the equation more carefully, x for y and x plus 10 for 2 and x and y being integers, you'll be able to conclude that the value of y is 1. The value of y is 1 because y is an integer and x plus 10 for 2 and x for y. So obviously y is an integer less than 2 and therefore the only option is 1. So we get the value of y, y as 1 based on this correlation. If you miss this part, the question becomes a very complicated one. So your ability to form this kind of a correlation is absolutely critical for you to move on to the next level. Now, once you make uh, this assessment that y is 1, now you can make the equation. 1 upon x minus 2 upon x plus 10 is equal to 0.8 by 12 or 8 by 120, which is 1 upon 5. Why? Because the saving is 80 paisa a dozen. So, uh, keeping the units in mind, this is the final equation which you get. Now, you go on to the, the options and see which value of x will satisfy this equation. And you'll find that x equal to 5 will fit in the equation. Hence, the answer is option number 3. x is 5 and y is 1. So answer here is x equal to 5, y equal to 1, which is option 3. Now, where are we coming from? That this is, uh, again, a trade-off between the two angles, the overt and covert. Overtly or superficially, this is a question on algebra based on quadratic equations. Uh, if you solve this equation, you'll get a quadratic there. And uh, on the other hand, the uh, covert side, on the more latent side, you'll find that this is a question which assesses your ability to understand correlations, uh, relationships between variables, which is a huge skill which managers need to possess throughout their lives. They will have to understand the relationships uh, between different variables which affect the market, which affect human behavior, which affect the product, uh, which affect the financial dynamics, etc. etc. Uh, let's look at the next module, geometry. Geometry, conventionally, traditionally, or overtly, is a test of lines, angles, triangles, quadrilaterals, higher polygons, circles, 3D figures, trigonometry, coordinate geometry. Again, if you move on to the, the insightful angle, the covert angle, you will find that this is not just a test of all these topics, but the challenge is somewhere else. Let's try to understand the challenge through a question. A solid spherical ball is cut into eight identical pieces by three mutually perpendicular planes. The proportion of the area of any of these pieces to the area of the uncut solid spherical ball is 
dash. Now let's try to understand what is happening in this question. You have been given a sphere which is cut into three, um, uh, cut into a certain number of quadrants through three mutually perpendicular or orthogonal planes. So uh, this is what it looks like. Let's try to take a section. Now this is what it looks like. Uh, this portion, A, O, B, C. Now A, O, B, C represents one quadrant which emerges when this uh, sphere is cut in the way uh, mentioned in the question. And uh, I'm sure you can appreciate that eight such quadrants will, will be formed. If you look at this particular quadrant more carefully, you'll find that it has four surfaces. Three of them are the cut surfaces and one surface is uncut. If you look at surface A, B, C, this is the uncut surface. The other three surfaces, they are the, the cut surfaces. B, O, C, A, B, O and A, O, C. These are the cut surfaces. And each of those cut surfaces is a part of a circle, one-fourth of a circle. For example, if you look at A, O, B, this is one-fourth of, of this particular circle. So the area of one of these uh, surfaces will be pi r square by 4, one-fourth the area of a circle. Since you have three such surfaces, the total area will be 3 times pi r square by 4. And to this, you add the area of the uncut surface ABC, which is one-eighth the area of a sphere. Now, the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r square. So, one-eighth of that, we get 4 pi r square by 8. So, obviously, this becomes 10 pi r square by 8, or it becomes 5 pi r square by 4. Now, this is the, the total area of one such uh, quadrant, one such uh, solid which comes out from the sphere. And uh, if uh, you have to find the ratio which this bears to the total area of the sphere, you simply divide it by the total area of the sphere, which is 4 pi r square. So pi r square gets cancelled out. And what you are left with is 5 by 16. So the answer will be 5 by 16. Now, uh, what are we trying to arrive at? We are trying to probably tell the cat aspirant that this is not just a test of geometry and 3D um, figures, but this is, is, is an understanding of visual imagery. It's your ability to form a vision. It's your ability to see space in a certain way. Tomorrow as a manager, you are operating in a certain competitive space. So how do you position your advantage, your value proposition in that space is what the challenge is. It's not geometry, it's space management. It is more of your visual uh, imagination so that you can accomplish the task, you can see the goal in a certain way and do better. And then of course we have uh, modern math. Modern math uh, is, is uh, one of the most disliked modules by the CAT community. The reason is it has an ability to unfold um, innumerable questions uh, where uh, typically a question is based uh, on uh, the number of permutations and combinations, a probability, or a challenge in terms of functions or logarithms, or we have the, uh, the set theory, which might be some respite in this module. Uh, overtly, again, uh, it's a test of all these topics, but at the more covert angle, the challenge intensifies, and let's try to understand this challenge through one such question from this module. A die bearing the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on its faces is repeatedly thrown until the total of the throws exceeds 12. What is the most likely total that will be thus obtained? My understanding of this market is, of the CAT market, is that students have an inherent antipathy for these topics, most of them. Uh, we are not generalizing, but we are trying to understand the trends uh, by and large. Uh, now, the minute such a student comes across a statement like most likely total, the most likely part is indicative of a probability and the student tends to hold back uh, that, oh my God, this is a question on probability and this is not my favorite uh, topic or this is my weakness. So let me not approach the question any further. 
Now, my advice here is that don't be judgmental on these issues. You have to explore the question in some detail at least and then take a decision whether you have to go ahead or not. So, uh, if you read the question carefully, uh, it's trying to ask you a probability that what is the most probable total that will be thus obtained and you uh, analyze the question in a certain way. Let's look at the penultimate throw. The penultimate throw is the throw before the last throw. Now, the last throw you will cross 12. So, the penultimate throw you would be either at a total of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Because what happens after this is that you cross uh, 12 and whatever is asked in the question uh, would, would fit in in a certain way. Let's look at the penultimate throw where the total is 8. If you have an 8 in the penultimate throw, then the next throw to cross 12, you would need a 5. And if you need a 5, the total which you will get is 30. If the penultimate throw has a total of 9, so you are a total of 9, so what you need is either you need a 5 or you need a 4. If you get a 5, you get a 14. If you get a 4, you get a 30. If you are at 10, then you would need a 5, a 4 or a 3, which means the totals will be 15, 14, 13. If you are at 11, you need a 5, a 4, a 3 or a 2. That makes it 16, 15, 14 or 13. And if you're at 12, it will be 5, 4, 3, 2 or 1, giving you totals of 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. Now, this is uh, the formation and you'll find that the most likely total is therefore 13 because 13 is common in all the outcomes. Hence, the answer is, hence the answer will be 30. Now, uh, again, overtly, if you look at the question, uh, prima facie, this is a question on probability, uh, trying to understand the outcomes and probable uh, outcomes in particular. But if you look at the more covert angle, uh, it, it is indicative of your ability to think laterally. You have to think uh, laterally, stretch your thought process and, and, and analyze the situation in a certain way. So this uh, ability you know, to think out of the box this ability to think in the unorthodox manner is absolutely critical to your role as a manager. Day-to-day -day situations, you need to think divergently and people who can do so will definitely be able to put across a competitive advantage in the market and do better. So in this video, we, we, we probably try to understand the two dimensions of uh, uh, the overall challenge in the CAT quantitative questions. One is a word the superficial challenge or the prima facie challenge and the other is the covert or the more insightful and uh, latent challenge. We hope this video helps you to connect better with questions. Thank you.